Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex and this is the Ramble and that's the city of New York below us that we're coming from until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, where are you again? You're in Pahrump? No, you're in Tonopah? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. uh, uh, Fallon, Fallon, Nevada. Fallon, it's, Nevada. I'm miles and miles from uh, uh, Reno. Miles and miles from Reno. Is it's pretty much the middle of nowhere, right? Or at least you can Close. see. It. I mean, you can see it I mean, from there. It's not like we have like you know we have a Taco Bell, but we don't have you know like Wendy's. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. That's well, how you can kind of. We used it, to have two McDonald's. Does that mean something when you suddenly find out you got a Wendy's? Uh, yeah, you got to drive yeah. uh, 120 miles. What for a Wendy's? Yeah, and uh, you know it's not. It's not pleasant. Well, I hate to but, ha- I hate to ask you this part because this is scary. Uh, the what? This is scary. This part. How about the? Is are there movie theaters in uh, in Fallon? The federal government. Well, no. There's an old antique, like 1940s movie theater. By the way, did I say this was Chuck Farnham? It says so in the picture, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Older, older, and less wise, Chuck Farnham. Um, you know, like back in the forties when you'd see a theater, you know, there's one of those mm-hmm. and it, uh, free movies, free movies all the time. Free movies. Yeah. But what are they I, showing? Birth of a nation? Sometimes I think, I think Ferris Bueller was playing a couple of weeks ago. Really? And they did, uh, over Easter, they were showing Harvey. Really? So. You know, um, but, but wait, but, do you have a movie theater where you see the latest films? Yeah, down down the street, the um, American Indian uh, Nation. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to call those? Like uh, the colony, the whatever they what are. Is it a movie theater <laughs> casino? <laughs> <laughs> they have a lovely, lovely theater mm-hmm. that they that the government kicked in. I want to say $3 million for it. Yeah. Pretty close. That does exactly what you would think if you went to a theater. I mean, it's got fancy seats and plays the latest movies, all of that. Okay. I've never been in there. Oh, I only go in there to buy popcorn. I go in there to buy popcorn, and then I come home and watch movies. Do, have, do they charge you to get in to buy the popcorn? No. No, I mean, I, it's a smaller town where everybody recognizes everybody. And they're, they're used to you, in other words. Oh, yeah. Here comes the guy sure. who buys the popcorn but never sees the movie. Right, right, yeah. I get nachos and popcorn and go home. And they know. They yeah, just like, you know, they don't care. It's So, yeah, so anyway. It's, so, right, next to the, it's right next to the smoke shop. It, the, the movie theater is between the smoke shop and the hospital. Hmm. Now, let me ask you, what happened to your front tooth? The reason I'm asking is because it's very obvious that you're, you you kind of look like an extreme David Letterman there. I'm I'm hoping to get a job as Michael Strahan. It just <laughs> fell out. It just fell it, out. It just fell out one day. I had a tooth. They call it they call it uh, self extracting, uh, and and. Uh, I actually had a tooth that was loose, and then one day it just fell out. I, yeah, that's I thought, what I thought I thought it was the crown. I took it to my doctor. He said, no, it's the whole tooth. Yeah, that's what I. That's the same thing that happened to me. So I didn't have to. And they were like, "Okay, it'll be fifty-two hundred dollars to replace that." And so I toy with the idea of, "Do I like the well, missing tooth?" I, it, I I would immediately pay for anything in the front. You know, if I had something way in the back, and I have had it. Uh, right. Although I did it anyway, uh, is not a need to do it. But front, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. How I can, um, long? How so long my home. So what something. did you do? You were just at home one day, and it said goodbye. Yeah, it just fell out in my hand. I'm like, wow, this is loose, and it just fell out in my hand. Really? In the dock. Well, dock you know what's good about it is now. Now you can 
be respected in in uh, in uh, Fallon. Yeah, exactly. And I don't have to open my mouth to use a straw. Really? It stick, it'd stick it right in there. Yeah. How long has that been that way? I don't know, year maybe. But right, it happened right around COVID. I didn't notice it last time, but you had a different angle you were at, or something. Yeah, yeah, so, no, it was, it was there. Yeah. So hey, you're, you're feeling better? Uh, yeah, you know, I had the uh, COVID ag uh, again. Of course. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I wonder why did I get those shots? Maybe it's because if I didn't get the shots, I really would have had it. It bad. would really suck. Yeah. See, I had it twice too, and it it was not real pleasant, but you know, I'm still alive. And well, I think what the happened shot was. You remember Buddy Love? Sure. Well, he got he, he well. got married to a woman who was my dream wife. And let me explain why she's my dream wife. Her name is Rachel. Uh, she's a doctor. Oh, that's good. And I'm a hypochondriac. No kidding. So I would love to have a doc doctor as a wife. Not that I'm not happy with the one I've got, but you know, right. what, what good is she? If she were a doctor, she could do something. She's, yeah, I uh, I know a couple of nurses, and uh, I'm not beyond you know making that phone call. Or I have the same problem. I just start looking stuff up, and this is as bad as I think it is, or not. And yeah, then, but anyway, so she they were here vacationing, and and they were staying at our place. They came for our place for one night, and that was the same night that I came down with COVID. Uh oh. So. Uh, I I said I wasn't feeling good last night. I was like feeling really woozy and you know the, you know you know the feeling and stuff. Right, right, right. Can't breathe. And bam. So she says. Uh, so I said I'm gonna go take a a COVID test just to make sure. You know. Sure. Yeah. So I go take a COVID test and I'm positive. So immediately she hands me a mask, puts a mask on herself. And then she calls the pharmacy and with her California physician's license, gets me Paxlovid. You know what Paxlovid is? Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. And man, I took, started taking that and the day it knocked it out. Just knocked it out. Yeah. Wow. But I, but I felt a little you know, tired, you know, since. Yeah, it you goes know. on for a while. It just doesn't, it seems to, uh, uh, not affect you in any negative way, but you're just tired and you're lightheaded and you're you know, this and you're that. And right. So, You'd like mean, it to you know, away. but I was glad, you know, it was amazing that I got it again because I don't go out. Right. I don't leave the yeah, house. I, I really don't. I mean, I, I say, okay, people say, why don't you leave the house? And I go, well, what's out there? You know, a bunch yeah. of concrete. Hey. You know, and if I want to walk to some green grass, it's like six blocks away. Who needs it? Right? I can stay home. I've got 2,500 right. square feet. I don't ever feel, you know, uh, claustrophobic in this apartment. Right. You know, so I never go out. So how did I get it? That's the question. Well, maybe you passed somebody in a hallway. You touched an elevator button. But I know. didn't go out. See, I'm, Marjorie thinks maybe it was a restaurant. And then somebody yep. just had it near me, and but she didn't yep. get it. I kissed her that night. I, she didn't yeah, I get it. Yeah, I if she was going to come down with it too. She didn't get it. No, just me. And I mm. had it. There's no question I had it. And then here's something: somebody who never got it, he stayed away from it. He was so proud that he had stayed away from it. it was Larry Bubbles Brown? Oh yeah. <laughs> and I do one of these things with Bubbles every couple of weeks. And I was, t uh, I wanted to do one with him, and I said, I don't know if I can do it because I'm tired or whatever, or there was some reason why I couldn't do one with him. Right. And he said, well, I can't either because I'm not feeling well. I think maybe I have COVID, but I don't know. And he said, but I feel like really like crap. So this was on like a Saturday. So I said, and then there was a holiday on Monday. So I said, Tuesday, go to, go to Kaiser right. and get it looked at. And he went to Kaiser, and sure enough, he had COVID. But they couldn't give him the Paxlovid because he had had it more than five days. Five days, yeah. And I mean, for a guy who basically, you know, spends his time in comedy clubs licking the shoulder of people, uh, yeah, you would think he had it a lot. You, you think he had a lot, yeah. But there are no comedy clubs right now. There are, but they're back again. But they weren't there for a while. But I mean, yeah. uh, uh, you know, so where did I get it? How did he get it? You know, I mean, he's out more than I am, so I can see that. But, um, 
And I'd be out more if I had a car. But I don't have a car. But if I had a car in New York, then I'd have to go to the garage and get it out of the garage. I was going to ask you if you had a car still. Huh? I was going to ask you the other day. The other day. Well, I, I, haven't owned a car. I haven't owned a car in 15 years. 15 years? Wow. Yeah, no, 16, 17 years. Wow. I haven't owned a car in that long. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if I know how to drive anymore. I'm, I'm yeah. serious, you know. I think about it. i got to get, you know, and I'm a little lightheaded now and then. I'm 83. I'm a little, I make mistakes, you know. Right. As you get older, you make mistakes. And so I wonder whether I even should get behind the wheel of a car. So. Yeah, my mom, she's your age, and she um, bounced her license. She doesn't have one anymore. Well, my, uh, my business manager, Gary Haber, Right. Uh, uh, one day he was driving or something, and then he hit something. It was a minor fender bender, but he just said that was the day I decided I'm not going to drive anymore. And his wife drives him everywhere, you know. That makes sense. But, but yeah. my wife doesn't doesn't think she can drive either, so we're really in trouble. So we're thinking oh, about I, go, we're thinking about I, go, going on vacation, going to Europe, and doing things like that. Sure. And uh, doing a whole bunch of really, just we decided that, hey, it's towards the end of our life. Let's start spending our money. Let's start going on a vacation. We haven't been on one in 10 years together. Last time we were on a vacation, we went to, I think, China. But wow. anyway, anyway uh, uh, I, uh, you know, uh, so I, I just uh, don't know if I can drive anymore. So we want to go to Europe. I like driving when I'm in Europe. I like getting a car and then driving through Europe, right? Because it's, sure. it's much more fun when you're in a car and you can say, oh, that looks nice, that castle. Yeah. Let's go see it. I'm going to pull over there and you know, check it out. The, if, sure. you, if you're on one of those long boats, they're not going to stop the boat for you. Okay? No. You know, so, uh, but, but at my age, uh, I don't know if I can drive it. So um, we're probably going to talk, take the long boats. Well, you could take, you know, you could hire a guy to drive you around in a tuk-tuk or something. Well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to have enough bucks to be able to hire somebody to be our driver or something. Yeah, you know. that's what I would do. Oh, Jeeves. Jeeves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give him some weird name. You come to Europe with it. Yes, you yeah. can be our driver. I'll get you a little chauffeur's outfit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he definitely needs like a cab hat or something. To... Yeah, yeah. And then I'll pass you off with that tooth as uh, David Letterman's child. Oh, yeah. No, it'd be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. is our son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but um, so, oh. you know, I don't know where we got it. I have no idea where I got it. And Marjorie didn't get it. And uh, she also treated me like a leper. I mean, you know. Oh, she, yeah. No, I, she I, had me stay, I, got she, it was, I was the only one in the house that got it. And. You know, I was banished to the other room. It was pretty much me and the cat. Yeah. I'm trying to remember where I slept that night because we had guests here. Oh, no, they left that day. Yeah. They slept, got out there quick. Yeah, I slept with her that night. Felt terrible the next day. And they were planning on leaving. And she right. did the... the uh, so I, I was banished to the uh, guest room. And so yeah, I was in there. Yeah, that's me. I was down the hall. I was in there for five days. Yeah. You know, that's what happened to me. And, and I said, you know, I feel like I'm I've been arrested and I'm thrown in jail here. You know, and it's terrible. So. Yeah, and you have to sneak in to get food and come back out. You yeah. can't be around anybody. It's, yeah, and you have to clean all the doorknobs when you touch them and exactly things like that. Although you but, know, yeah, I, your I, own, I think the latest I think the latest version of it isn't as uh, infectious as the other ones were. Otherwise, Marjorie would have gotten it. You know, again, it's mellowed itself out as well, it's uh, the broken. first. The first ones here. I mean, if I got that back then, chances are you wouldn't be talking to me right now. Right. Same thing with me. They were like, my doctor said, he goes, you need to go home, and until there's a a, a drug, you don't talk to anybody and you don't leave the house. Right. And that's why for a year, for a year, I never went out. Nothing. Right. Well, also, you you have a comorbidity. You're a little on the heavy side. Me? I'm a fat guy. Oh, okay. He's a fat guy. Yeah, clearly, I'm a fat guy. You know, if, no, it, 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 let me say this, and I don't think I have to tell the audience this. Chuck has never cared about his appearance. I, I kind of like it. it. Yeah, you, it's an it's a, a what can we call it? Um, 
What's your look? And mentally ill style. Mentally sort. ill style. <laughs> like I'm missing a tooth. Look at that thing. God, it's it is looking. I don't, know. I don't care. Well, but you could do something about it. But then again, you might ruin your reputation. Yeah, I don't want to. Hey, don't, Chuck, you lost a tooth. Welcome yeah, to Fallon. Yeah. <laughs> nobody, yeah, nobody, nobody in town said, "Oh, I see you lost a tooth." Nobody. Never come well, because they're all missing one. Or one, or more like missing five or six. Oh, I was going to tell you, you were talking about driving. Mm -hmm. My stepdad. Now, my keep in mind, my mom's not driving anymore. She's mm -hmm. decided not to. Yeah. My stepdad was a truck driver, and he had a couple of strokes, and continued driving the truck. <laughs> then the truck decided to crash. The you crush know. the the wait a minute the truck decided to crash or he, well, he you made know, it crash. I, I'm not sure how the insurance came through on that. Yeah, but there was nothing left of the truck, so he goes home and goes, I I didn't have a stroke. I didn't. I'm not. I don't have a stroke. And I'm looking at him and I walk. Uh, I'm like, that guy had a couple of strokes. I mean, you know, he's got the limp, the whole can't walk, falls right. down. Right. Still driving to this day. Well, you know about our friend. Right. You know up about to the our, doctor's office. You know about our friend Will Durst. He oh, yeah. Had, no, no, no. I'm had a stroke. intimately familiar. He's been in the hospital for almost three years. I know. You know. So, I know. And so, and I keep and, going, you should not be driving. And he drives to Reno to the doctor. But you see, here's what's amazing about a stroke, okay? You just never know what it's going to do. Some people right. get a stroke, and they talk funny for about a week and a half, and that's it. Right. And then other he people, never did that. Other people like Will, he's still in a bed three years later. Right. You know. Now, my, my stepdad is leaning, and my, he has to hold my mom's shoulders to walk. Mm -hmm. But yet he's driving. But yet he's driving. Well, yeah. it doesn't mean, just because he had a stroke, doesn't mean that he doesn't have the mental capacity to drive. Depends on what... Right, but his, depends, his facility's got to be slow. It depends on what attacks you. I have a friend who was a... Um, uh, a uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, had, a, had a stroke. And uh, he is, you can still tell he had a stroke. You right. Know? But he says to this day he can't read. Cannot read. Oh, yeah. I mean, something you're taught to do and then it's just something that's, to most people, normal to you. You know. Well, his hand, his hands would start, like he'd hold his phone and all of a sudden his hand would throw his phone. Throw his would, phone? Oh, yeah. Like, w you do it, like, go. Like, you'd be sitting there talking and he'd go, Bam, and the phone would go, and he had no control over it. Well, what does so he What him, does he have against his phone? I don't know, yeah. but I, I got him a strap to tie around his neck and hook to the phone. Oh, geez. So now when he throws it, it only goes about a half a foot. So in other words, this is a guy who had a stroke who doesn't want to admit he's had a stroke. I don't, you know, your relatives are your relatives, and you take care of them as much as they possibly could. I mean, if you called me and said, hey, Chuck, I have some problems, and... You think you could help me? I, I would help you, you know? And it's like the same thing with him. It's like, I've known this guy my entire life. Uh, went to high school with him. And he, he he won't admit anything. It's like, no, I'm just a little slower. I hey, think listen, the doctor... Listen, I, 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 I had a friend die on me recently, my friend Shecky. You may have met I, Shecky. Shecky when, I, I did yeah, meet yeah. Shecky. Uh, and... Um, that's a, see, that's how far back we go, folks. It, in San Francisco at Live 105... Farnham knew Shecky because Shecky was always in my life, right? Sure. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, when he started getting sick, uh, people have pointed out to me now in certain videos that were taken of him at the time. See, he doesn't look well there. And I went, you know, I didn't notice it because right, right. I when I would I watch your your thing occasionally, and I would like when he was uh, yeah on the yeah. Uh, the Monday show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shecky would look good, and then. Sometimes Shecky would not look good. Yeah. You could tell there was something going on. Well, I didn't. I didn't see it. And yeah, as, as a matter of fact, time. his other best friend, uh, her name is Randy, who worked at the Letterman Show as the assistant director. She wrote me and said, "You know, I didn't know it was as bad as it was." And he was. She was taking him to the doctor's visits, but he didn't tell us what was going on or how yeah. bad it was. And I, yeah. often, I often like to tell the story that I, you know, I, I urged him for years to get a will because he had a lot of money. Right. He had a lot of money. 
And I said, you don't want that money going to the state or into probate or to relatives you didn't want to see get it or people right. fighting over it. You want to take care of it. And so for like, I don't know, two years, I must have been a real nudge. I kept saying, got to get the will. Got to get the will. I said, not for me. I, I, you don't have to leave me anything. Right. I just want you to have the will. Because I couldn't see that money going up in the air, you know. And uh, he just wouldn't do or, anything about it. And finally, isn't, it, wasn't his, isn't his basement full of film and tape and films, stuff? Films, tapes. Uh, it's not that those things are worth that much anymore because he they've all been converted to fi video files and so on and so forth. Oh, he could good. have gotten rid of all of them and still had all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, But anyway, uh, as a matter of fact, they in getting rid of his stuff, his, this woman, Randy, who's his executor, said, is there anything of Shecky's you'd like uh, and it's in the house and I told her no I couldn't think of anything because I don't want comic book posters you know I mean I know, the, I, know this, <laughs> yeah. I know this stuff that's worth a fortune in there but I don't I wouldn't know which was worth a fortune and which was just junk right okay uh, and, and I didn't really care and then I thought about it the other day and I said you know he has a computer I said that computer has a lot of files on it of movies. I mean, it, it it's stacked to the brim with movies right. and movies and movies. And I said, that's kind of his legacy. I said, really, it should be passed on to somebody who would take care of it. And she said, well, if you want it, you can have it. So I'm going to take it. She said, she doesn't have the password. Do you know how to get onto a computer if you don't have the password? Depends on the computer. It's but a Windows yeah, machine. Get in there. Windows machine. How do you do it? Mm -hmm. Do you know how you do it? Should we should we really be discussing this here? Well, maybe I'll give you a call and find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll work on that. I, one time I went to his machine to, to do some work on it, and I said, what's the password? And he gave me the password, but I can't remember it now. I think it was a bunch of numbers, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. You know, That's but, what it usually is. Yeah. Well, mine's That's the best good. part. That's the best part about passwords. Well, People mine's, pretty, mine's pretty good. Mine's password one two three. So I think yes, it's that's pretty, the way to go. You know why? You know why you should have password one two three? Yeah. That's the one they'll never try because it's so right. common that they'll never try it. You know. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, where or your was, dog's name or something? Where was I? Um, what were you Checkman. Talking? Oh yeah. So he, you want to talk about somebody who just wouldn't let you know when he was sick. So yeah. what happened was he went and he, one day he calls me. He says, I, I made the, I did the will. Uh, and he said, you know, and then he told me what was in the will. And I told him that was very nice, you know. And I said, but listen, you know, I said, I'm 83. You're 67. Who's going to outlive who, you know. I hope I never get to collect and I hope Check that I never oh, am able yeah, to. Yeah, so he, uh, you want to talk about uh, somebody who just wouldn't let you know your memorial. All right. 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 And three, guess what? Three you know, months, there you were. Three months later, he was dead. So when he made out that will, I know he knew something. You know, but he wasn't sharing it with us. And even his good friend Randy, who took him to doctor's appointment, said, I didn't know he was as ill as he was. You know, because yeah. it was very sudden. You know, that's what makes somebody dying such a real scary proposition. Is, right. Is because. When they die like that, just out of a clear blue sky, you were talking to them a week ago. Yeah. You know, it was the last thing you expected. You know, I was planning on going out there in a couple of weeks out to his place and hanging out for the day. And all of a sudden, he's dead. It's not just that he's sick. He's dead. Right, right. No, I've, I had a couple of those ago, about a month ago. And these were guys I talked to all the time. Matter of fact, one guy shares my birthday. We had the same birthday. And probably a guy that... To this day, when you have some kind of thing you want to say to him, you go to reach for the phone and realize he's dead. Yeah, no, he's yeah. still in my yeah. phone. I yeah. don't get rid of the people who pass away in my phone. I, I, it, it feels weird to me. Yeah. And that guy went, and then two days later, another guy went. And I'm like, I can't keep this up. This is not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess that, that's what happens when you get, you know, your age, my age. Hey, I got, you know, my Medicare starts in two weeks. Oh, yeah? Very exciting. And I took your advice, by the way. Yeah, I what? went your way. What? Supplemental? No, no. I decided that, that that I, because of the way my insurance is set up, I don't need supplemental. 
Oh, really? Yeah. I, I went in there with all, your whole story, and the guy goes, well, you already have coverage. And I go, yeah. And he goes, don't get rid of it. Don't get rid of it. Yeah. Keep it because it's a real good deal. And it'll take care of all the drugs and everything. But we'll also and, take care of the supplemental like that 20% that Medicare doesn't yeah. pay. Good. Terrific. Hey, so, hey, listen, I just looked at the clock on the uh, computer here. And it says wow. we've run out of time for this little get together. Yeah. It went by fast. Well, I like these little moments. Yeah. That's Chuck Farnham, folks. He'll be with us again in a, a probably another week or so, depending on when we run the second one. Thanks. Yeah. For, thanks for being with us. Bye -bye. Ciao. Bye bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah yes. Oh hey, look, look, folks. This is New York these days. <laughs> I just. Thought I'd put that as my background picture, okay? So you could see it and see what this city looks like currently. We got all this uh, smoke coming down from Canada. Thank you, Canada. Thank you. By the way, I got a very nice note uh, from an old friend of ours, uh, Jim Browning, uh, who um, wrote me and said the following, uh, sorry the skies of New York are full of smoke, it's totally the fault of Quebec and Ontario. No big fires in BC. It's not our fault. Take care, Jim. Okay, well, then it's, I want to just pass that on to you, that it's not his fault, okay? It's just whatever. Anyway, that's what, the, that's what it looks like out there, and it don't look, it don't look terrific, you know? But uh, anyway, let's... Um, Let's bring in what people we have here, which is just a couple, and maybe other people will join us as we uh, as we go along here. Uh, but these are two really great people to have joining us, and uh, here they are. And uh, how do you like my background, guys? Looks like California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody sent me pictures of California. There's only one difference between this and California. At your worst, you were never called the smokiest place on the face of the earth. Oh, okay. we had an orange day. No, but we had today. This is the worst pollution in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Says who? You're number one. We're number one. We're number one. Yeah. We had an orange day that looked apocalyptic. Well, this it looked like this, yeah. Uh, you always get that when you get fires. And I told Marjorie, the first thing I said, I looked out the window, I said, it looks apocalyptic. Then we turned on TV, and the woman there was saying, hey, it looks apocalyptic. And then they went to a reporter outside, and he said, it looks apocalyptic. So I figured I didn't come up with anything original. So, it looks apocalyptic. It looks ap <laughs> apocalyptic. Yeah. So, uh, if it was brown, it'd be more like the smoggy skies of the 70s in Chicago. This, if, if it did, yeah? If it was brown. Oh, okay. That's, that's too orange to be like. <laughs> yeah, that's too orange to be whatever. But let me go back to my other uh, thing here. Let me see. There we go. Get rid of that. But I figured I'd, I'd use that as a background tonight at one point. So you could see how terrible it was. I mean, it was just, it was scary. I, I was sitting here, I was doing that, inter I was doing that interview with, uh, with uh, Chuck. And I'm uh, it, it, all of a sudden I notice my picture is getting a little dimmer because I you know I had the lights on but I also have the lights on in here and then the lights coming in from the outside. All of a sudden my picture is getting very dim and I look out the window and all mm -hmm. of a sudden the sky is just orange. I mean it's like it's night out there practically. Like it's apocalyptic. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. So anyway, so that's that's what's happening. So that's life, you know. And uh, oh, here, oh, here come some more people. So let's admit uh, them can, as well. Can you, can you smell it from inside? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That bad. Yeah, wow. that bad. That bad. Uh, I went into the uh, I, I, after I was through with. I smelled it a little bit when I was starting the interview, and then I closed the doors here, and then I went out, and uh, I went into the other rooms, and the windows were open. And I smelled smoke. I mean, it was like I was smelling smoke. So we closed all the windows in the house. Yeah. You know, so. 
Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And then uh, a couple of times we've we've felt ash coming down from the sky. Yeah. Uh, when the Oakland fires, the Oakland fires were happening. I think we're seeing we're in Oakland. <laughs> Don't ask me. Two white kids in Oakland that night, and I think we're seeing Public Enemy or Digital Underground. And uh, we came outside, and the the uh, Berkeley fires was that week, and we could feel the ash. All the ash was on our car. Yeah, well, we were supposedly, if you were outside, but I wasn't outside, you could kind of feel the ash on your face, and you could uh, you could actually breathe it in. Marjorie was out. She went to have lunch with a girlfriend, who she said oh. she would have never gone to lunch with her if she'd known this was going to happen, because coming home, yeah. she said it was just horrid. You know, mm -hmm. she had to put on, she put on a mask. Thank, Good. thank Good. God for COVID. Yeah. We had, everybody had the masks, and people, a lot right. of people were using the mask, because you got to. You know, keep that stuff from getting in your lungs. Absolutely. So, uh, you know. And we're now. Hey, there are two types of people in this world, and now I can't read the rest of it. Those who can extrapolate from incomplete data, <laughs> and the other kind. <laughs> and the other kind. Yeah. Oh boy, you and your T-shirts. You you got the best T-shirts. Amazing. Amazing. So uh, anyway. The trouble is in Austin, nobody can knows what they mean. <laughs> yeah, well, a it's, a, it's a little smarter than the room. Yeah, oh. that's true. That's true. Yeah. I get stopped at the grocery store all the time. And they do they know what it means? Do they have to ask you what that means? Well, 50-50. I mean, half the time they know. Yeah, half the time they, they figure know. out the shirts. And half the time they don't know. Yeah, and then I explain it to them and they laugh. I'm going to have some uh, I'm going to have some of my my ice drink here. Mm. Water. They should invent a new way to bottle this stuff. Come up with a non-plastic stuff yeah. that will also keep it really cold for a while. Because I put, have this stuff in the refrigerator, right? And I take it out and it's really cold. It stands out in the room for like about two minutes and it's warm. You know. Uzi. Huh? That's what the Uzi is for, yeah. Uzi's. What are those yeah. called? What? The little foam koozie things. Oh, yeah, the koozie. I, I, I bet I should get one of those. Yes. I bet that would help, wouldn't it? Yeah. Someone Alan, might send you some. Alan just bought you five. Don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Find out what size you need. Yeah. 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 What size is that? This uh, is Kevin? like uh, this is like a. Uh, you know. Yeah, those are kind of small though. Yeah. No, got to find a small. Is that about the size of a beer can or a Coke can, Alex? You think yeah, you think my koozie is small? You should see hers. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's Gucci. Yeah, but anyway, so uh, uh, how, how have you all been? Yeah, very good. The last time I saw you, I was fretting about Saturday. You yeah, know? yeah. And it turned out to be really nice. It turned out to be great. It turned out to be terrific. Yep. Uh, good. You know, I good. it's the only time in my life. That well, what was happening is we were. I was. This was our uh, our Sheck fest for my friend Shecky who died. Worked over at the Letterman show, and a lot of the Letterman people were there. And the people who did the Letterman show put this thing together. And if you go online to see it, and you can go to YouTube or you can go to Vimeo, and you can watch it there. You can go to my Facebook page, and you can click on the Sheck fest poster, and uh, it'll take you right to the whole presentation which is about an hour and 50 minutes. Yeah. But it's it, it goes it, by fast. It, yeah, yeah, the, you, you watched it then. It's very entertaining. It's ve yeah. and what it was, it was produced like as another episode of the Letterman show. I mean, it was, you know, it was produced as a TV show. And uh, so, so I was on the list, you know, I went I was going th I think it was third. I was third in line. And so it's getting, uh, they start the clips, they had some clips, and I went up to the front to get ready to go on, and the woman there says, listen, you don't have to go up yet because this is about a 12 minute clip, and so you go on after the clip, so you'll know when the clip is almost over when Dave comes on. And I went back to Marjorie, sat down and went, I have to follow David Letterman. <laughs> I said that's that's not fun, and but I did it, and I think I did a pretty good job of following yeah. him. 
Uh, in fact, in the immortal words of what we do in show business, follow that motherfucker. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I actually, um, I think I did an okay job, you know. Yep. They That's didn't do such a good job. That was a problem. Uh, it was kind of, uh, I don't know, he was kind of like mailing it in. You know, I didn't feel a, a sincerity there where everybody else who did their little clips and stuff, it was absolute sincerity, yep. you know, and, and love. And maybe Dave isn't capable of that. I don't know. You know, I don't know him personally, so I can't tell you. But uh, anyway, it, it turned out to be a pretty good afternoon. If you didn't see it, anybody else watch it here? You I, watched, watch? I watched it live. Oh, you watched it live? live. Oh, wow. Well, it wasn't. Yeah, it was a little delayed because you guys said it was, they said it was going to start at 2, and then uh, it was on like 2.15, and then Len said, oh, it just went on. So then yeah, I went well, they, they ran it live on Vimeo. It wasn't they ran it live. It wasn't live. That was a completely edited video that they were then sending up to Vimeo and running it live at the same time. But it had happened like five hours earlier. Yeah, it happened at 10 o'clock in the morning. And by the time oh, you really? by the time you oh, saw yeah, yeah, yeah. it, it was more like four o'clock, four or five, five here. Five p.m. your time. Yeah. Yeah, and it said live, and then yeah, later on, yeah. if you went back to it, it was just the recording. And then the next uh -huh. day they put it on YouTube. So if you want to look at it, you just look at Sheckfest. Did you happen to see it, Alan? No. No, he doesn't give a shit. Uh, I'm gonna uh, see it. Uh, 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 did you get Did you get did You get to see it, Jeff, at all? Not yet. But oh, give, you'll it. enjoy it. I mean, it's very. Yeah. I, I think everybody here will say it's a very entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Even even if you didn't know all those people who they were. You know, then it's like getting into some of the people you recognize from late night, and then Paul Schaefer was on there, and then so I knew Letterman would be oh. next. Yeah. And then Chris Elliott was on there for a little bit, and so it was just interesting. I mean, you know, there's a group of us that sort of knew him from the past years, you know, just from the show, so we sort of, you know, knew him a little bit. And then to hear of all of his other side of work and stuff like that, and all the people how they admired him so much, it's pretty cool to hear. You know, now it yeah. sucks that you learn so much about him now. And he's gone because you know it's it's a very interesting past. So well, it was a lot of fun. Well, what was family was there? His brother, his niece. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. brother. Bro I never met his brother until the other day. Never had met him. I I heard about him. You know, Shecky always talked about him. Shecky, in fact, wanted me at one point. We we're supposed to go out to his brother's place in Steamboat Springs and hang around for a couple of days, and I we just never got around to it. Uh, and uh, so it was good to see his brother. It was also good to see somebody who I've only met once in my life, but I knew was a good friend of Shecky, so I wanted to touch base with him, was Leonard Malton, uh, oh, yeah. who, uh, you know, um, said the most poignant thing, I think, of the day, when he talked about his daughter. And, you know, Shecky and his daughter were very close, and so close that, in fact, I think Shecky always used to say Leonard wanted him to marry his daughter. You know, and a yeah, that was mentioned in an article or something, wasn't it? I remember reading something. About really, that. really, yeah. But Shecky wasn't about ready to get married to anybody. He, he yeah. didn't. He didn't. He, that was. I not, think he mentioned that as well. Yeah, that was not <laughs> for him. Okay, but he liked her. He thought the world of her. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so I went up to him and I just wanted to say hello because uh, I hadn't, you know, I, I knew that we had Shecky in common. And that was very nice. And then I saw some old friends that I had seen in a long time. Bob Morton was there, but known as Morty, who was the producer of the Letterman Show for many a year. And there was nobody like Morty. Everybody loves Morty. And he, and I saw him. He, we were so happy to see each other. You know, we hadn't seen each other for years. The first time I ever met him, he sold. He tried to sell me cable. <laughs> he was going door to door selling cable, and I already had it, so I couldn't buy it from him. But. One time, years later, I met up with Morty, and, and, and he said, you know, we've met before. And I said, no, where? And he said, I, I tried to sell you cable. I was going door to door. And uh, you were, uh, uh, you had already had it, so you didn't have to have it, but, you know, I tried to sell it to you. And that's where we met before. So anyway, it was good to see Morty. I hadn't seen him in years and years. And I saw Jerry Foley, who's the director of the show, of the Letterman Show, and people like that that I just hadn't seen in a long time that I, I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed seeing. And then there were other people that knew me and I didn't know them. Pat Farmer, who was on The Letterman Show, uh, who was the, the, one of the stagehands who used to do the, the Oprah, they used to read the Oprah uh, transcripts on the show. 
while smoking cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. And Pat Farmer came up to me. He said, "Oh, I, I loved you when I was a kid. I loved living, listening to you. You know." So it was kind of, it was kind of made me that they made me feel kind of good, it made me somewhat appreciated, you know. And they, and those who didn't know me knew me because of Shecky. They said he always talked about you, you know. And it just, it was just it turned out to be a wonderful day. Yeah, you were kind of worried about. That. I, well, I was worried about it so much so that I actually had a uh, panic attack the night before. Yeah. And I don't usually have panic attacks, you know, uh, but I mean I was just so. I, I didn't know, you know, what I was going to say would really resonate with people, you know. And I had been working it out. Every night before I would go to sleep, I'd lie in bed and I'd run this thing over my head. And then they'd edit it, you know, and then put something else in and take something out. And finally I had the final version of that. And uh, what was funny is uh, my Albert looked at it. And Albert used to always give me a bad time and so did... Uh, uh, some people that I never did any prep for my radio shows yeah. and I said I'm prepping all the time and they never believed me when I said that they didn't see the piece of paper where I had everything listed that I was going to say on the show but they didn't realize that every night before I go to bed I'd think of something and I'd work it through in my head and I was going to do it the next morning so and many times uh, when I was living in the Bay Area I would actually get in my car take a drive and literally talk to myself in the car of some bit mm -hmm. or something I was gonna do on the show. So I always did prep, but my prep was different than anybody else's because as you noticed, if you looked at me on that thing, I didn't have a piece of, a piece of paper in front of me. You know, I don't need a piece of paper in front of me. That's not the way I prepare. So anyway, it was, it was a nice day. It turned out to be a pretty nice uh, get together. And huh? what were you gonna say? I said good. Yeah, yeah. It didn't. It didn't uh, give me a bad. Didn't. Didn't make me feel bad. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Alan. I have a question for the panel. Does anybody have a ring or that type of doorbell? I'm looking to buy one, and I have no idea what to get. <laughs> well, get one that uh, <laughs> definitely lets everybody over at Ring see you. <laughs> well, they've got that problem already. They're being sued. They're owned by Google. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they, they sold some video that they weren't even supposed to have. Little and they kids also play they in or share something. with their neighbors, too. They share signals. Yeah, okay, so yeah. I'm going to avo avoid ring brand. Well, but are, you he, he, but are you Simply Safe? The, the, uh, simply Safe? Yeah. R really? Is, there is a brand that doesn't uh, cause problems that way? Well, from when, it, when I started, it didn't. I, it may do it now. I don't know. A lot of the, a lot of them do it. Well, I just, you know, I don't know. The one that I'm using is. I don't know why this. Simple. This shouldn't even be a problem if they had a program properly. Yeah. You know, they shouldn't be able to look in on you. They should make it so no. you can't look in. I mean, Apple is pretty good at this sort of thing. Uh, yeah. In that, Apple uh, makes sure that none of the stuff you do, you know. Uh, yeah. uh, it, it, it is hackable, uh, and uh, so they're very careful about that. And you can do it. They could make rings un unhackable by even the ring company, right? Yeah. You know. So Simply Safe is the name of one of these doorbells, and you have one, and it works good. Yeah, I've had it for since uh, I don't know five or six years, maybe five. And years. so when the doorbell rings or when you pick up motion, your 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 smartphone tells you so. Yep. Oh, okay. Tells you when the ding dong on your phone, and you can answer it with your phone. Well, what do you, do you live in an apartment or a house? Me? Yeah. Uh, yes. Both of us live in a house. Uh, oh, is this a house you own? You mean? Yeah. I oh, do. okay. All right. I didn't realize that. A house, yes. A ring is, yeah. But like, I have an apartment here. I have no reason to put it in. No. No. Yeah. Well, I know people who live in apartments that have the ring. How? Can, answer me this. How do you keep your ring from getting stolen? <laughs> well, if they steal it, the signal's there and it's on. It is, it is taped, and so. Pretty much locked out. Yeah, in. No, that, no. What you'll see yeah, on the tape is it. you'll see some guy's hand going over the ring, and then it goes blank. Yeah. 
And, and then, then he walks off with your ring, hooks it in. Do anything with it? They'd have to hack it to get into it. Yeah. And then what are you going to use it for? What? Well, what? Yeah. Well, how do you hack? In, what do you mean you have to hack into it? I because mean, because it's a, it's a it's a it's a Bluetooth device basically. It's a cellular okay. device. Yeah. But it's and a it's useless to anybody else because you have to have a password and everything else to get in it. Yep. Really? Oh, okay. I mean, I don't know yeah. how these things set up. So yeah, it's I, just like yeah. a smart bulb you use that you get it onto your network. And it goes through your network, and if your network is secure, your everything else should be secure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't realize that. You don't have yeah. one, Brian. Uh, uh, what no. brand? Your I do. I have a ring. Ring. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> then I have Lorex uh, cameras all over the house. Those are good too. They're wired. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I, I just have the ring just for the front door. Yeah. But. Okay. Uh, yes, Jeff. My uh, my mother-in-law one day f fell down in the house, and she's laying on the floor for probably two hours. Wow! Oh. And she didn't have her cell phone, of course, which she never had. And my and Pam goes in there, says, "Hey, mom, where are you?" She finds her on the floor, just laying there because she can't get up. So Pam got her all of these videos yeah. in the house. They're just small little videos, and Pam could see them mm -hmm. from about five different places. Yeah, but suppose she falls below the level of the eye level of the camera. Well, we don't yeah. get her. <laughs> <laughs> they're get pretty, new, they're pretty wide angle them. lenses. Yeah. Though. They're all pretty wide angle, so you get pretty good shots. Yeah, for really? yeah it oh. worked out very easy. Yeah, you know and, they make. The, oh, sorry, well, Jeff. I well, ultimately we gave it away. Yeah, because they make no these things. Available. My mother's got one. Yeah, it hangs around her neck that fits in her purse, and you push the button when you've fallen, and it calls for help. Well, you know yeah. what it'll do it. What it'll do it is all you have to do is have one of these, and I've taken a fall. And it immediately starts calling 911. Yeah. Yes. It, it asks you if you have about 30 seconds to stop it from calling 911. So, same with the watch. Yeah. Yeah, same with the watch. So not not a bad yeah. idea, you know. Just if you drop it. Uh, Do you remember that commercial? Cool. I've fallen and I can't get up. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Still on. Med alert. Med alert or something? So Still on. on. Yeah, and you, oh. you press the thing on your chest. Yeah, my mother's got one of those. So. Yeah, but suppose the batteries go dead. That eh, takes ten years. I mean, the you problem with some of those time. is they have they have some that call directly to the you know the fire department and some that call into a call center. And those are that you got to watch. Oh yeah. If they call the fire department. They'll call every five minutes to whoever, and there'll be this you know this yeah. this alert. And then they and then if you got if you have them in a home, you can have them directed to the home. And then the home will relay to the, to the, uh, yeah. you know, local emergency after they figure out what's going on. Really? Oh, okay. Because I, I have GPS built into them, the ones she has around her neck, so she's yeah somewhere. If she and, goes to the park or something. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, right. I, I have I you know this carbon monoxide alarm in the apartment, and all the apartment owners have to make sure you have one in your apartment. So that once a year, when the battery goes dead, it will start annoying you. Yeah. You know, and and th th then you can't, and then because it's always up on a high place, you have to get up on a, on a stool in order to replace it. And then when you replace it, you can't remember how to replace it. Well, finally, they just put in new ones about a year ago that are good for 10 years mm. of battery life. The fire alarm, right? Yeah. That's the uh, not monoxide. Uh, monoxide should go down low because it's a heavy gas. Oh, okay. That's yeah. usually in the plug. Yeah. Yeah. But, monoxide is a heavy well, gas. Well, I think this one. I think this one does both now. In one, does fire yeah, they, and monoxide. They do that, but it's useless if it's up on the ceiling. Yeah. Right. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. Well, no, it's up. It's up. You know, it's smoke up over rises, a door. So that's why up. the smoke alarms up there. Yeah. And then Costco sells two packs, and you only need one. And you put one up there, and then you put the other one somewhere, and then when another one goes out, you can't find the other one, so you got to go back to Costco and get them. <laughs> <more. laughs> exactly. Then I found the shed, and I found three of them. Do they yeah. really have two in the, in a package? 
They had two in a pack at, at Costco, yeah, oh. for the fire alarms, yeah. Yeah, I so, uh, I went to Costco, uh, I don't know if you know, it's a couple of years ago, opened up an adoption agency. And so I went in to look for kids, and they were all, there were two of them at a time, all taped together. Yeah. You know, yeah, little joke you can't there. just get one. That's, that's the Costco adoption service. Okay. Anyway, well, let me see here. What else is happening? Oh. Our uh, everybody's running for president now, I guess. Well, they're all yeah. running for president because they're hoping the one guy who's leading the pack is going to get indicted and probably won't lead the pack any longer. I guess that's what they're hoping for, right? Because yeah. all they're going to do is divide up a, a vote that's that's really not there, right? Everybody's it's a lot like two, 2016. Well, it could make right. it rougher for, uh, for uh, Trump because... While there may be a lot of people who say now they're going to vote for him, but given a real good choice, maybe they might want Chris Christie or they might want uh, Pence or they might want any one of these other people. Nikki Haley, who, who are some of the other Nikki ones running? Uh, there are about 10 of them now, something like yeah. that. The idiot from Florida. Oh, oh, DeSantis, I forgot him. So are other people are going to forget DeSantis. Yeah. I don't think yeah. he's got legs because he's so unappealing i mean he's just so without humor without uh, anything i mean at least you know you got to admit one thing about trump he was funny i mean maybe i have a bizarre sense of humor but he was funny uh, and, uh he has a lot of hits but so far i you know if i were a republican which i'm not and i had to vote for one of these guys i'd go for chris christie Mm -hmm. I really would. I mean, Haley. Because I love the way he's like not bowing down to Trump and he's really saying some heavy stuff. You know, he's not letting him get away with anything. Um, uh, I'm there. He's, he's kind of got a plan from what I heard his speech the other day. It seems like he's got some kind of an idea what he wants to do. Yeah, well, you know, he'd been a governor of a state, so you know a lot about administration and how to handle things that need to be done. So oh, I see him as I see him as a very good possibility. Uh, it's just a question of if he can get, get any real traction. The question is going to be if indicted, what's then going to happen to this pack? Okay, and it would be good for some of them to get out of the way so the others could have a shot. You know? Yes, uh, Alan. So so DeSantis obviously is going after Disney, the the probably the largest multimedia company in the country. Everybody thinks of them in Florida as the theme park, which is big. But uh, they they said something in the business news today or yesterday that they're going to sue the uh, sue DeSantis and the Florida government for defamation and loss of business and all this other stuff. Who Disney? You know, they were going to they were going to put their world headquarters in Florida. And now they're looking for another state. Uh, who Disney? Disney. 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 Yeah. They are not happy. What do you mean they were going to put their world headquarters? In other words, besides all the amusement parks and everything, they were just going to put their world yeah, headquarters. Yeah, corporate yeah. office. Well, you know, you can say that, but that they didn't come close to doing it. So, uh, well, they, had, oh, they, they had, had plans. Yeah. They had designs. No, they had yeah. designs on on having a new campus to add to the one they already have down there. Oh, to okay. like deal with the businesses in Florida. They already had people that were moving to Florida. Yeah. yeah, but it was making one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year or more. That we're going to move to Florida, yep. from wherever it, they were. All was, that's gone. All that's gone. Well, that's yeah. gone. Yeah. And yeah. also, uh, your governor out in California is thinking of filing charges against DeSantis for kidnapping. I, I'll yeah. tell you. I'll tell you Lock another thing. Up. You know, they, 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 sent, they sent a plane, a, a private plane, jet, a jet to um, Sacramento and dumped him off there, and the church took him in and stuff like that. If I was the governor, I would have ordered the state police, which is the highway patrol, to impound the plane mm -hmm. as a criminal act, arrest the pilots. And I got to tell you, you know, DeSantis wouldn't care about the pilots. Let them fend for themselves. But when you got a $50 million jet sitting there yeah. that you just chartered, you can bet that he's going to be concerned. Well, I'll tell you something. You know, okay. They signed waivers. They all signed a waiver saying it was okay to take them. Yeah, right. But 
Yeah. But that, no, but, that, but, but no, but that's it, what it, that, 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 it back to them is that they signed, they all signed a waiver saying it was okay for them to go to Sacramento. That's yeah, what and that may be fine, but they were lied to about the reason they were going to Sacramento. And that's, so yep. therefore that's fraud. Yep. And so therefore anything they signed was not legally binding. At and at I'm not minimum, a lawyer, but I know that to be true. Right. At, at a minimum, well, California could charge them with trespassing because they, you know, they came here well, illegal. The uh, uh, New York is going to charge DeSantis. It looks like with the same yeah, thing, yeah. Uh, because I mean, it, you know, it was a, the the group of people he sent up to Martha's Vineyard. We but, know they were lied to. Yep. People they sent to Mar Martha's Vineyard. Oh yeah, yep. yeah. I mean, but if they were, it doesn't matter if they signed something. If they were lied to, yeah. you know. I'm telling you what they're saying. Don't get me. I'm, no, I'm not blaming you for it. God bless it. Oh, you just we just lost your audio there, Brian. Lucky us. He's muted. Yeah. You're I, muted, Brian. He didn't want to hear what I said anyway, so oh, okay. never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying that that's what their their argument is. Oh well, they signed a waiver, and it's like, well, yeah, but they all speak Spanish. Was it yeah. in Spanish or English? Yeah. Right. I just don't know what anybody finds in a lot of these people. You know, I mean, I I, I don't like Pence because he's too religious for me, okay? Yeah. But uh, at least I can't say that Pence is a dishonest guy. Can any of you say he's dishonest? You know. No, he seems to be he, honest. He's, I'm too honest. And what he say, he couldn't He couldn't go to dinner with another female or something with without right there or something. Like that. Yeah. That's yeah. ridiculous. Well. He did go and ask, uh, what's his name from Indiana, the former vice president, ask him if he could change the vote or whatever when he was... And what was his name? The guy that, that was uh, oh, uh, Bush's. Uh, no, right? you're talking about from Indiana. The, oh, the governor, not the, the former vice president, was yeah. uh, 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 under uh, George W. H. W. Bush, right? H. W. Bush, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, uh, and he's the one that told him, "No, you can't do that. It's just a ceremonial thing. You can't do it." Well, that's what that was. What that was, that was what's his name? Um, so soon we potato, forget. Potato, potato, whatever. He got to. Oh, right, right. Oh, he could. Oh, him. Oh, you're talking about the first father, the father. Yeah. Yeah, the guy that went to South, South America and was there and said, "I wish I had learned more." Um, uh, not Spanish. Uh, uh, Brazilian. Yeah, something like that. And I would be able to talk to you people or something like that. I mean, Dan Quayle. Um, what is Dan Quayle. 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 Quayle, that's it. Quayle, yeah. Quayle. The so, so, Quayle. Soon, so soon we forget. Yeah. 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 Pretty forgettable. I saw him at the earthquake near your house. Alex. You're right. Were you there? Were you, were you, were you there when he showed up? And, and yeah, then, yeah, he was. Yeah, he, was, he went right by us. And then he got in the car and everybody booed him. Yeah, he went yeah. by. And as they were booing, as he was going around the corner and they were booing him, I mean, I was standing out on my, you know, at my front door of the apartment house. Oh. And um, a, as he's going around the corner, somebody yells out, hey, there's Alex Bennett. See, I'm oh. even more popular than a vice president. Maybe that was okay. me. Maybe that was me. Oh, uh, that's funny. funny. That would be funny. You know, so. That would have been funny. So That would have been great. Yeah, we took my friend Hugo up to the earthquake because his Hugo was so small, so we could park it anywhere up there. So we got all the way up to the marina. Yeah, you go you and the Hugo, you're a little big. For I'll tell you, you the next yeah, day, the, the next yeah, day after that, uh, after that um, uh, earthquake, it was like a festival outside. Yeah, to begin with, it was a very sunny day, very beautiful day. Supposedly, all days after a big earthquake have always been nice. Yeah, why is that? I don't know. Something in the air. I don't know. Uh, people say, there's a thing. Have you ever heard this term, Brian? Uh, uh, or, or, earthquake or weather. Earthquake weather? Yes. Yeah. What, what is, there is no such thing. There is no such thing, right? No. Yeah, there is. But anyway, they, they, it was, they have it, earthquakes every day in Hollister down by where Kevin's it at. It was gorgeous yeah. the next day, and I woke up, and I looked out the window, and here are thousands of people walking down the street. You know, they weren't driving because you couldn't really. Right. And and they were walking down the street, and all of a sudden, here come the cops, shoving them out of the neighborhood, saying, this neighborhood is dangerous. Yes. And I'm thinking, what the hell am I doing here? You know. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, uh, it was quite a, it was quite a, quite an event, you know. 
yeah. not like the apocalypse today, but you know, I thought what I thought immediately thought was somebody should run outdoors right now, you know, while in the middle of all this during the day, because some people took video and photographs downtown, and it was all you know, orange skies. You, you guys know from California what I'm talking about. And I thought you could make a real good apocalypse movie real fast, you know, while the city was like that without having to do any special effects. We yeah. had shots of New York City from over in New Jersey. You couldn't see the buildings yeah, in Manhattan. All you could see was like the low level buildings by the piers. And it kind of looked like what New York must have looked like back in the early 18th century. I mean, Looking at those pictures reminds me of the wildfires in California when the smoke comes yeah. into the Bay Area. Yeah, yep. can't yeah. see that. Can't see San Francisco. But as I we said, you know, Bay. we set the re re this is the worst. Uh, the, well, this is the worst air uh, pollution that we've had in the history of New right. York City, well, yeah, and it was the down. most polluted place today on the face of the earth. <gasps> I um, close my case. I rest my case. Wear a mask when you go outside. Oh yeah. Oh, are you kidding me? Of course I'll wear a mask. Absolutely. And a condom. And a what? And a condom too, just in case. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. and gloves. You never know when it might make for some interesting opportunities. So absolutely, you know. it's hard to breathe out here. But would you come in the corner? I want to give you yeah. some head or something like that. Well, let me tell you. Uh, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and he's not here, but he'll be here tomorrow, so we can give him a bad time about it tomorrow. Uh, Phil wanted to buy a new computer, as you may remember, because mm -hmm. he liked to brag to us what he was going to get. Yeah, he got okay. the next one above you, and well, now there's. Wait a minute, let me, no, you, let me tell the story, please. Oh, oh, sorry, I didn't know that's what you were going to talk about. Yeah, right. well, you know, let me finish, and then you talk, and then if I haven't said what you were going to say, then you say it. He doesn't get the show yet. Well, he doesn't get what we do here, but he will. It'll, it's a simple process. Anyway, uh, did I or did I not on this program tell him, don't buy it, number one, you don't need that much of a machine, and secondly, if, if you want to buy it, there's going to be a new and better one out in a couple of months. Did I or not, did uh, I not say that here? You tell that on everything he buys. That's the problem. Well, because I'm, I'm pretty, you know, unless, you know, it's a fairly brand new model, in which case I go, well, this is the best time to buy it. Uh, well, uh, he got his machine, what, two weeks ago? And on Monday, um, <laughs> Apple came out with the new one. <laughs> that's 50% that's faster than the old one. And how much less? Huh? No, it's the and same price, expensive. same price, just the uh -oh. same price. No raise in price, you know. But, you know, I, yeah, so. Did he send you pictures, Alex, of his new computer running? Oh, he showed me pictures, and I saw that he had three lights. Right. He sent me the same picture. Yeah. Uh, how many lights do you think I have here? Two. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how many pictures do you think Elgato makes these lights shows in their demonstrations of these lights? Two. Right? You don't well, need you have to have three because of the one upmanship between the no, two. But, but you. you don't need one right in front of you. Uh, in fact, if you're going to have one in front of you, it should be actually back here. So it's doing the green screen. But you don't need that because there's enough light coming off of both of them. You don't need three lights. But he this won't listen. For the, this is for the one day a week or one day every two weeks that he gets yeah, on your show. Uh, yeah, that's it. No, but he's got other stuff he has to do with it. You know, so. you just don't like, understand, what? Alex. He has a lot of very important stuff he needs to do with that stuff. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, but anyway, so he again, and then he wrote, I wrote him and I said, I told you to wait. And he said, no, you told me to go out and buy it. And I said, no, <laughs> no. no. People can remember on the show me telling him, you know. Yeah. It's that yeah, time. It was that getting to be that time of the year where they go were going to release a new model, or as I call it, buyer's remorse time at Apple. You know, it's built. Every machine you buy from Apple has built-in buyer's remorse. Yep. Okay, because they will put bring out a new one. You know, I'm happy with the one I have. I'll keep using the one I have, and then when I want a new one, I'll probably by that time it'll have an M3 chip in it. You know, but uh, so he. 
The guy never listens to me, you know. Who's Jason Roger? Anybody know? I never no. heard of him. No. I, I shouldn't no. trust it, should I? And no, then, you should not. Oh, two more people. And then it says iPhone 14 Pro Max is the latest one. That sounds like a porno. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like a name of a film. <laughs> Pro Max, yeah. iPhone Pro 14 Pro Max. Yeah. A lot of you know what people do? They get these phones. And then they don't change the name of the phone in their thing. They don't put their right. own name there. So that the you know so the phone still has the name iPhone 14 Pro Max. So, you know, but anyway, you know what I, I would say to everybody: if you are um, uh, desiring to call this program and you don't want me to like question who the hell you are and you just want to be a new person calling it, just write me at alexagabnet.net and um, you know. Uh, I'll uh, and just give me your name, and I'll make sure that we then let you on. Twenty minutes from now, you your your game your uh, email will be nah, nah maxed out. Nah, it doesn't. And if it does, so what? I don't care. I have nothing else to do with my miserable life every day. But anyway, so uh, that that's uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think of what else has been happening. Hey, hey, Prince Harry is on in court in England. Um. That uh, you know, it's not much of a story to tell you the truth, and uh, you know the uh, the Russians continue to do war crimes. Yeah, they blew up that dam. What a bunch of shit that is. Well, that, you know that yeah. that's a war crime because that that impacts people in a very dangerous way. You know. Yeah, I have a um, the guy I started banking with in Arizona. <clears throat> he his mother his wife is ukrainian and his mother and fa her mother and father were here for the last i don't know six or eight months because of the war and they decided to go back about a month ago and they were going back and they're somewhere outside of car key in between car key and yeah. else. that's not good and, huh that's not good no and and they were um they also have a house out in the boonies and the last when i talked to him about a week and a half ago he said they were all getting ready to go to this house out in the middle of the woods where they have a house there and they were stocking it up with food and and all kinds of stuff and he was sending them boots and you know uh kevlar vests and everything for for mom and dad to go how, how how can they go back to that crap well they just you got know, tired so of being here and, and leaving their homeland there's a certain I think there's a certain guilt you would get I, I don't know that's I, that's what it was yeah I mean I would I would have it too feeling. wouldn't you have it too if you had to leave California because you know there was something like that happening and then yeah everybody at home was getting killed off or fighting the fight or whatever and, and you're you know in in Italy or someplace like yeah, that yeah and the 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 son I think the son or a nephew i'm not sure which i can't remember which one it was but he was a younger kid and he decided he wanted to go help out he was doing all the the front line moving of equipment and things like that he decided he wanted to put on yeah. a helmet yeah and they were going to send him the front line really hmm. yeah. well you know uh, Car Kiev is, is one of the places they're attacking. How many times have you ever left the house, though, and said, you know, I left my car keys upstairs? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very I much, a, folks. So that's my only tile. Ukrainian just, joke, okay? What? <laughs> you just got a tile for that. You just push your phone and push the button and it beeps. Yeah. You'll find Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so what's new? blows up. What's new in your, uh, in your home there, Brian? Nothing. Where's Adrian? I did get a check, though, from Patelco. Patelco Credit Union versus Wix. I, I, they won the settlement. Qualified settlement account. So you know these big settlements that they have, you know, millions of dollars and all this? Mm -hmm. I got $49.05. Well, <laughs> okay, let me tell you what I'm getting. I have no idea what the settlement was about, but then when they said you could be included, I always send those in. Yeah, and every once in a while, you get a check. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, there are places you can go 
and find out if you are owed money because a lot of times there will be money you got back for a warranty or something. Yeah, it's you know. unclaimed funds. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Daddy, I got a question here, Daddy. Let me ask you this. If Mommy's doing this and I can't do that. I'm and, gone. I found a lot of money for my mom in that place. Well, I, I, oh. I, that, well what happened to me is I just got a letter from uh, SAG-AFTRA uh, saying that they have settled the suit, the Ed Asner suit, for uh, I don't know how much, fifteen million dollars, some some amount, and um, that I am entitled to. You ready for this? Thirty-six cents. No, actually, four hundred dollars. <laughs> no, now you go a oh, while, wow, four hundred dollars. That's kind of nice, but no, it's not nice because it's supposed to make up for the fact that I can't get insurance cheap. Yeah, you, you know, so oh, that four four hundred dollars that'll pay for yeah, about two it. months of my current insurance that I had to buy to make up for the fact that they weren't right. giving me insurance. Right. You know, they got all those other piece of pissed off people they got to pay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm in, involved in one with Facebook, and all you can get one if you had a Facebook account between I don't know four or five years ago in 2022. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Get, yep. And so sign up for it. Now let Facebook pay you. Well, wait a minute. How much? Well, I, I, it, does, it says that. Yeah, well, uh, let me know when you get the fifteen dollars. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's usually about it. Uh, that's okay. Fifteen dollars here and there. I mean, you know. Well, no, but there aren't that many things to make it here and there. I don't know if I would even fill it out for that much. But you know, the, the here they didn't even ask me. They said you're on the list of people who should be re uh, compensated. So you were opted in automatically. So they said, "Don't you don't have to do anything. You'll be getting nice. the check." So, cool. Yeah. Almost a month's rent. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Almost a month's rent. Oh, I'll tell you the other thing today. So I had the, I when I a few months ago, a year ago, when I went and got all this stuff done because I had to go to the emergency room. Uh, on my lung, they found a couple of nodules. Okay. One of them is a nodule that's been there and hasn't changed in six years, which if a nodule hasn't changed in six years, they consider it benign. It was automatically considered it benign. The other one was another kind that had a different name to it that is very seldom, if ever, considered to be malignant. So I, when my, my doctor my, uh, saw this, he said, okay, well, you better go down there, back there the first of the year and get another CT scan to see if it's grown. And I'm going, well, to begin with, in most cases, these things aren't a problem. And I don't really know why I should do it because neither of these are that terrible, okay? Neither of these present a danger to me. Uh, but I decided, well, I'll go get, I'll go. he just sent me a thing four months, five months late saying, uh, go get your uh, your uh, CT scan, okay? Because undoubtedly it came up on his uh, Rolodex, or I don't know what. Automated. It came. Yeah, uh, it, some kind of automation. And here it is. It's uh, when he told me to get in January. He hasn't let me know until June, right? So I call up the ra uh, I, I don't know where to. He doesn't even say where to go to get a CT scan. He says go get a CT scan. Oh yeah, right. My uh, my UPS store down in the corner. Uh, does CT scans? Yeah, right. So, but but I I figure I'll call up Mount Sinai because that's where I have my like my chart and things. So when they finally do it, I'll have it there. I'll be able to look at it myself too. And I call up today, and first of all they say, well we're having larger than amount of calls coming in, so just uh, stick with us, okay? So I wait about fifteen minutes, and finally somebody comes on the line. <laughs> and says, can you hold on for a moment or so? And then goes away for another five minutes. And then they come back and they say, okay, uh, we're here. Oh, by the way, I, could you give me another couple of minutes? And then they leave again, right? And then the person says to me, okay, what's your name? And I said, Ben Schwarzman, right? And they said, what's your birthday? And I gave them my birthday. And the next thing I know, I'm getting a message going, would you please rate this call on a level of one to five? Oh, yeah. I love and I'm it. going, what is that about? I'm not even finished with this call. Right. Apparently, I got hung up on. And now they're, oh, they're yeah. asking me how I like the call. 
from a from a number of one to five, and I went. I said one, and hung up. I mean, it just. I, I, so I I still haven't made my appointment yet, you know. And wow. it's probably going to come to nothing, you know. I'm not, you know. It, it it all indications are that it wasn't anything. So terrible. I, I I would bet this is the. The, the new way of scanning for people that smoke cigarettes, even if you smoke more, I think it's more than a hundred cigarettes in your no, lifetime. No, no, no. But this was just uh, I, the only the only new uh, new uh, nodule was this one that right. w- that they list as being considered most times when they see it considered to be non malignant, because Good. these are li- two little you get nodules on your lungs all the time. I could you could get a nodule on your lung today from the smoke in the city. Yeah, you know, except for I'm not in that city, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, right. You know, and okay, so if I had a brand new one and it wasn't, and it was a kind that could become worse, fine. Mm. But the one that could become worse can't because I've had it. It's been the same way as it was when I they saw it mm. five, five, six years ago. And anything five, two, beyond two years being the same is to be considered uh, uh, benign. So, you know. But my doctor doesn't know this. He just doesn't want to get sued. So he's sending me off. So I have to lie in a goddamn CAT scan machine, CT scan machine, and, and put up with this crap. You know? I'm sure you've had them. It's very quick. I know it's quick and all of that. But, I mean, come on. It Also, it terrorizes me, to be very That's honest true. with you. It terrorizes me. And and medicine shouldn't terrorize you. It should You should go, oh, good, you know. But, I mean, in the... It, it, Five years ago, ten years ago, the same doctor would have never sent me to get another CT scan. Mm-hmm. He's just doing it now because he wants to. And then I know if it even goes up one t- millimeter, okay, he's going to say, "Well, I want you to go see a pulmonologist." He just wants to get he wants to get the whole problem off his hands, you know. And I'm not saying either that, that or he actually cares about you. No, I think he's he's a, he's afraid of getting sued today. I think most doctors today. And I don't think anybody here would disagree with me. Uh, uh, practice defensive medicine. You know, they're more afraid of getting sued than you dying. Okay, uh, and and so I, I you know, it, it bothers me. You know, when that kind of thing happens. I see there's somebody trying to sign in called Rohan. You know, come on, folks. If you're going to do it, have a little more interesting yeah, name. Everybody here. call yourself Phil Meyer. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Right, uh, but uh, we're going to talk to Phil tomorrow night. By the way, be tuning in for that. Okay. I'm sure oh gonna... damn! I got something going on. Do you really? Oh, okay. So do I. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, so I mean, um, as I say, I was I, uh, when you saw me last, I was uh, really kind of worried about this whole deal. Well, actually, I did. I didn't do a show on Friday. Oh, I didn't tell you why I didn't do a show on Friday. I got what I ever I had a year ago. Uh, remember when I ate the tuna and I wound up in the emergency room? I got the same thing. I was lightheaded, uh, all the same stuff, only this time I just took it easy and it went away. But I had had tuna for dinner that night. So now I found another. Uh-oh. The only thing that's terrible about getting older is you find all the things that you love you can't eat anymore. Yep. You know? Happens to me all the time. Oh, you know. I don't know if this is an allergy or whatever, but. Uh, I wonder if. Even I got the same thing about a week ago, too, maybe about a week and a half you ago. You were sick, you weren't you? Yeah. I ate tuna. Yeah. And. I just started a new med too, so I don't know which one it was, but man, was I, I, I don't ever puke. And I was hugging the bowl for a day and a half. I was nauseous, although I had some nausea pills left over from the doctor that was visiting us a couple of weeks ago. So I took one of those, so that took care of that. And then I just laid down, you know. Oh, no, I was, I was, I thought I was on my death. But I decided I wasn't going to do a show on Friday. Because I, you know, I want to be well for the next day, you know. So I think I took four or five COVID tests too. Yeah. The yeah. thing, thing that I hate mm-hmm. is when you're at the porcelain goddess throwing up, and it's worked its way through the other end, and now you don't know if you should sit or or <laughs> stay, 
stay there for oh, hours. And it's not funny. It's there was no uh, issue there. There was a big cork in there. there. <laughs> well, yeah. I also had stomach. We I had stomach distress as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's why I wasn't here on Friday night. I just, I just decided, screw that. You know, if I'm not well, I'm not going to do a show. Mm -hmm. You know, the show go. Whoever came up with that saying, the show must go on, was full of crap. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, uh, I mean, and I've always believed that, you know, I think in, even with the sh times I've taken off here, in my, in the whole time I was doing radio, I think maybe I never took off, more, got sick for more than like three days in like 20 years or 30 years, something like that, you know, I just, I just always went, I don't care if I'm sick, I'm going, the show must go on. And I have uh, several ways I can teach you to clean barf off of microphones, by the way. So. <laughs> so you can Mine would have a problem. Mine is attached to my camera on top of my monitor, so it would make a big mess. Yeah, yeah. Well, projectile vomiting. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, but, yeah uh, thanks. You're welcome, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, let me see here. Oh, um, um, is there anything I wanted to ask Charlie? No, there's nothing I want to ask Charlie. Nothing going on in Texas. Well, what do you mean nothing going on in Texas? You got that governor. He gets stupider and stupider. And aren't there some some legal cases going on that seem to be that it's reversing decisions in te in Texas? There have been a couple of uh, cases like that. Yeah. Yeah. And our federal judges have stepped in and stopped stuff. Got an iPad. Yeah. You got a new iPad? Yeah, get, getting away from Microsoft. What do you mean you're getting away from Microsoft? Oh, you're getting away from Microsoft. Yeah. Microsoft, yeah, I want to I wanna go with Apple, everyday Apple. Well, why it's would so you get... It's so much simpler, lasts forever. They go forever. I mean, my I had a uh, iPad here, and, I, and it, it didn't go bad on me. I just decided after a while that it was real old, and I wanted the new faster one. You know, so that's what I did. Um, and it's, you know, when they first came out, I remember when he first when he, they first came out with the iPad, I said, who wants one of these? All they are is a large iPhone. <laughs> and then I got one and found it was indispensable. Just yeah. absolutely indispensable. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Yes. When I bought it, the first one, I used it to do what's called CAD programs yeah and originally it was it was in the system uh, maybe you had to pay extra for it or whatever I was very happy with it then within about six months they canceled it and they canceled you know, what this, the CAD program yeah really and it wouldn't work on, on Apple so I had to get another uh, computer yeah, and I gave huh. up my Apple stuff. Yeah, I remember they had the issues with PDF too and all that stuff. There's a couple of things like that, so Adobe. I was disappointed with it. Not not where I complained about it, but disappointed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, it seems to be working okay. They they yeah. were. Uh, I, was I mean, looking, I have an Apple now. They made an announcement. Oh, did you see the announcement quickly? The announcement of the new. Oh uh, yeah. Apple Vision, thing. Thirty five hundred bucks. $3,500. But, but as I'm watching them describe this thing, I'm going, how much is this going to cost? I mean, are they going to try and bring this in for $1,500? I don't think so. And then I when think they said, Bill's got the first one on order. When they said, <laughs> when they said 3500 I went, now that yeah. makes sense because of all the stuff that's in it. I mean, it is, it's got it so that if you're wearing it and you got the eye piece on and everything, it see it lets people see your eyes, a visual representation of your eyes. I mean it's it's hmm. it's slick. But, but you're I, actually looking at a computer screen underneath it. Yeah, but basically it's a computer that you just put on your head. That's it. Yeah. And, you know. And you see everything in front of you and you know, whatever. It, I, it's not a bad idea. I think that it is not priced to go. Okay, but you know. Yeah. Hey, I'm playing the theme song. I have to tell you that because you can't hear it. Uh, and I'm, I've still been looking for the thing I have to click in order for you to be able to hear it, and I don't see it at all. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much to Brian uh, for being here. We appreciate it, Brian. Always appreciate it. 
Uh, thank you to uh, Charlie. Another T-shirt, another day. Uh, yeah. And and uh, Jeff, thank you so much. Boy, you got color on your face, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. it's hanging out. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, thanks to to our 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 our, our good friend um, Alan. And finally to Kevin. Uh, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection over most of the same station. I'll be here again uh, tomorrow night, same time, same station in life, 1030 Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. See you later.